Welcome to the Florida Gateway College Library Orientation. I'm Patricia Morris, Coordinator of Library Services. We're going to look at the library resources available to you, many of which can be accessed off campus. First, let's look at the features of the library itself, which is located in Building 200 on the east side of campus. The library is a great space to use a computer, study, or work on assignments, and get help from library staff. We have many items available for you to check out, including about 30,000 books on the shelves, DVDs of popular movies, nonfiction subjects, and foreign films, and a large collection of audiobooks on CD and MP3. We can help you locate any material in our collection. If you have suggestions for books or other materials you'd like us to add, please let us know. We can also request to borrow books we don't own from other libraries for you through interlibrary loan. We have the Lake City Reporter on microfilm from 1901 to 2004. After that, it's available online at the University of Florida Digital Collections. We can help you access the microfilm to look up local news stories or events. We have about 40 computers for students to use and five study rooms. There are three small and two large study rooms with keys that can be checked out for two hours with your student ID. Each study room has a computer and whiteboard in it. You can request a room for a group to use or to use individually. We have a beautiful reading and study area at the far end of the library. The large windows and high ceilings showcase the natural setting outside. Your student ID is your library card and you need it to check out materials, check out a study room, or to get free printing and copying. Remember to always bring your student ID with you to the library. DVDs check out for two weeks, and most other materials can be checked out for three weeks and can be renewed if no one else has reserved it. Students can check out a total of 10 items, three of which can be audiovisual materials, and three can be from the same subject area. This is our family-friendly study space where students can work on a computer while supervising children, playing games, or watching movies in this adjacent quiet play area. Let's start at the FGC website, fgc.edu, and click on Library at the top. At the bottom of this page, you'll find our current hours of operation and contact information. Our regular fall and spring semester hours for the 2021-22 academic year are Monday through Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturday, 1.30 to 5.30 p.m. We sometimes have varying hours throughout the academic year, so check on our website or contact us for the most recent posting of library hours. Under Research Help and Guides, you'll find helpful information, including a video on avoiding plagiarism, and towards the bottom, tutorials and links on learning MLA and APA citation styles. Let's do some searching. You can start your research either by clicking Search the Library or Databases A to Z. I'm going to start by clicking Search the Library. This is the Library Catalog search page. This display may look different from time to time as features are updated. Before you begin, click Sign In in the top right corner. SSO stands for Single Sign-On, and you sign on the same way as logging into your classes with your Wolves email, mine's a little different, and your password. Then you'll see, after you sign in, you'll see your name in the top right corner. Here you can check on items that you have uh, checked out or a request that you have pending and other information. Let's search for criminal justice reform. As I type, I can choose several ways to search. Everything, which is the default, includes all the books, media, ebooks, articles, and other online content that we have access to. Library catalog includes books, media, and ebooks, but not articles or other online content. And articles includes articles and other online content. I'm going to search everything, and from my results, I can make refinements to my search with all of these options on the left panel. For example, held by library will show me books and media owned by the library, and available on shelf will exclude anything that is already checked out. The entry for this book shows me the Library of Congress call number here, which tells me where to find the book on the shelf. If my assignment is to find articles from peer-reviewed or scholarly journals, I can do it several ways. 
I could have begun my search by choosing Articles at the top, or after getting initial results, I could select the resource type Articles on the left. Then to make sure my articles are peer-reviewed, I could select Peer-reviewed journals here. Peer-reviewed means the article has gone through a publishing process and has been evaluated for quality by experts in the field of study. By clicking the limit, all my results will meet that criteria and is noted in the result entries. Scanning my results, I'm going to look at this article more closely. Clicking on the title will bring up the article detail, and scrolling down slightly will show what databases include this article. I'll select Criminal Justice Database, and here is the article. I can also download the PDF to show the article as it appeared in the original publication. Returning to the results list, I can perform other functions to revise my results. These include resorting the results from relevance ranking to date newest or oldest or by alphabetical by title or author, limiting to a certain resource type, or limiting to a date range here under creation date. Another search strategy is to put your terms in quotation marks so it will search as a phrase. You will get fewer but potentially more focused results with a phrase. There are other functions you can perform to help organize your research. The pin at the end of the entry will save the record to your library account. Be sure to be signed in to save and access the entries. You can also save your search by clicking the Save Query button. Access these favorites by clicking the pin at the top. To start a new search, click Library Search at the top. If you need help finding articles or other research for your assignments, please contact us in the library and we will be happy to help you find the information you need. Searching in the library catalog is one way to find information, but you can also go directly to specific databases, either from the library website or at the top of the catalog, click Databases A to C to see the entire list of databases available to FGC students. We're going to take a closer look at a few of these in a moment. You can also limit the number of databases shown by clicking on the subject drop-down at the top. If you only want databases most useful to, say, health and medicine fields, you can select that and see the list with some of the most commonly used databases at the top. So let's look at the list of all the databases and choose one to start our research with. The first several that start with the word academic are very large, basic, comprehensive databases and are good ones to start your research in. Uh, I'm going to pick Academic Search Complete to start. Here's the basic search screen, and I do have some different things I can select here. Full text is already selected. If my assignment is to select scholarly or peer-reviewed journals, I can make that selection there. If I have a specific publication that I want to limit my searching to, I can put the name of the journal or magazine in here. I can add a date range here, but I can also do that later after my results come up. So up here in the search box, let me start typing eating disorder, which will be my topic. And as I start to type, these suggested topics come up, so I can just click on one and it will perform the search. So here are my results. I have over 17,000 results and I am full text, peer reviewed. Here's the date range. If I want to limit it to maybe only the articles from the last 10 years, I can change the beginning date to 2011 and hit enter and then it'll strip out all of those older articles. So let's take a few uh, look at a couple of these. So here's one, an article with the title Concern About Appearance on Instagram and Facebook. Let me take a look at that. If I click on that, I get some detail about the article. And over here, I can click on PDF Full Text and it'll show as it did in the original publication. This one looks like a lengthy article, so this may be something that I'm interested in. I can either print it or email it to myself uh, and use it in the future. 
Most of the databases have citation tools, and in this one, which is from the database provider EBSCO, the citation tool is this yellow box on the right side of the screen. When you hover over it, it says Cite. If I click on that, then this tool will open up, and I can see the many different types of citation formats. If your assignment is to do your research using APA, you could follow this. If you are following MLA, you could follow this format, but be aware that there are often formatting errors in any citation tool, including things like EasyBib or ones that you get on the internet, so you would need to know how to do correct citations, and we'll refer to this a little bit later, to go through the different elements and make any corrections, but it's helpful to have these tools to get you started. Back at the databases A to Z list, the next database we're going to look at is called Opposing Viewpoints. So I could, could scroll down or I could just click on the O and all the databases that start with O will come up. Opposing Viewpoints has different reports that have to do with controversial issues, topics in the news, and current events. And on the front page there are some featured topics, but you can go up here to where it says Browse Issues with the light bulb and a long page with all of the topics and issues that are covered will come up. So as you can see, there are many, many different topics. Some of them have recently been updated. Let's click on the one that says STEM education and take a closer look. So here is a typical report. Right here, it says read more. And if you click on that, this is an introductory article about this topic. So you can read through this, get a good understanding of what your topic is. It has main events, uh, renewed focus on STEM courses, different headings, race and gender gaps in STEM subjects, and so forth. Further down, there are also critical thinking questions to make sure that you understand this topic. And any topic that you choose will be similar. Going back to the main STEM education page, we have this table of contents that shows all of the content that is on this page. So it shows over 500 academic journal articles. We could click on one of those. There are some featured viewpoints, different primary sources, reference sources, infographics, and so forth. So this is a database that has a lot of depth, a lot of information right in one place. So if you're studying one of these type of topics that are the current events, topics in the news, controversial issues, come to Opposing Viewpoints and take a look at the different content that they have. And it's a good idea when you're doing a report or presentation of this type, go to a database like this and see what there is already a lot of information about. It would be more efficient to come here, click on one of these topics that you're interested in, and know that there's already many, many resources with articles and other topics that are, or other resources that are included in here, rather than deciding on your topic and then struggling to find content. The next database that we're going to look at is called CQ Researcher. It's similar to Opposing Viewpoints in that it deals with topics in the news, current events, controversial issues. So this is CQ Researcher. The newest report is on the front here, and there's some other featured reports. And then on the right side are some different topics that are frequently researched. You could choose one of those. You can also go up to Browse Topics, and we have these broad topic areas. Choose one of them, and then choose other ones. You can click on one of them. Here's Future of the Book. So this is a typical of a of a full report, and it's a very long page. It goes into a lot of detail about this topic, and you can see on the left side here, uh, this is a table of contents to everything that's on the page. So for any of the topics in CQ Researcher that are full reports, it'll give an overview of the situation, background, current situation, outlook, pro con, pro con and so forth. And any of these numbers in boxes, these are citations to further articles or websites. So besides using this long article from CQ Researcher, you could click on these and then use these other sources as part of your research. But it goes into a lot of detail, has a lot of information, 
and CQ Researcher is a very good database for doing research. So you could browse topics this way. You can also go to Browse Reports and pull up all of the most recent reports and select one of these if you wanted to do the most recent topic. You can also just do a keyword search up in the search box here and access one of the reports this way. There are a few more databases that I wanted to point out. We have several that in include newspapers, and the easiest way to show them is to change the drop-down here from All Subjects to Current Issues and News. So there are 17 databases under Current Issues and News, and they include this database called America's News, which has U.S. newspapers. There's a subset of that called Florida Newspapers, and a featured subset of that would be the Florida Times Union Collection, which is the Jacksonville newspaper. Besides those from America's News, we have two databases covering the New York Times. New York Times Historical has the images of the actual newspaper from 1851 through 2016, and that overlaps a bit with the New York Times Current, which goes from 1985 through today's New York Times. Besides the newspaper ones, there are a few other databases that I wanted to point out. This one is called Films On Demand, and this is a streaming video database. Okay, and this is the main page, so there are some featured uh, streaming video clips on the front page here. You can also do a search in the search box or go to these three lines over here to open up um, this index and it includes uh, documentaries from Ken Burns, from PBS, from HBO, or you can go by subject. And here we have all the broad subject areas, so if you wanted something, for instance, um, teaching and education. And then these would be, some of them are clips, some of them are fill, full videos. And let me show you going back. We can look at different um, archival films and newsreels, uh, historical videos, World War II, for instance, old films. So this is a really fascinating database. You can spend some time searching in there. And the last database that I'm going to point out is called Statista. Statista is a statistical and infographics database. So you can search several ways. You can do a search in the search box here, uh, or you can click on one of these popular topics on the beginning. I'll click on gaming. And this is a database with charts and graphics. So as I scroll down, um, here is a chart Digital Market Outlook Video Games User Penetration in the U.S. Projected through 2025. So this is how it comes up, and as you hover over the different bars in the graph, it gives you the statistical information. This has a lot of very neat information. You can also click on other related topics, and it'll give you uh, related graphs. You can also go up and under statis statistics here, you can click on one of these categories as well as go to reports or outlooks or just do a search. Search for water and we have different reports on aspects of the uh, water industry. And besides just the graphs, it does have um, text information that you can use in your reports as well. This one has, uh, they have these long reports called dossiers that you can access. This one's 51 pages long on the global water industry and includes all these different graphs that are included. So Statista is a very interesting database that would add some um, additional interest and variety to your reports and presentations. Back on the library website, the last thing we're going to talk about will be resources for creating properly formatted citations. Under Research Help and Guides, scroll towards the bottom where you'll find videos for learning MLA and APA formats and the link to the Purdue University Online Writing Lab at the bottom. 
For MLA, you can watch the videos to learn the style rules and visit the MLA Style Center for examples of citation formats, sample papers and works cited lists, and ask the MLA for frequently asked questions. The APA Style Home has a helpful website with reference entry examples and explanations, sample papers and reference lists, and a lot more useful information. Remember that any citation tool in a database or online will get you started, but you should check over the citation to make sure it is properly formatted in the format style your instructor has assigned. The library staff is available to assist you with your research and citations. We hope this library orientation has been helpful to you. If you ever need assistance with research or citations, we are here to help. Good luck with your classes and thanks for watching.